<laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's All right. Do this. Okay. Okay. Hi, and welcome to episode 15 of I'll Knit If I Want To. I am Jamie Marshall. I'm the dyer behind Beautiful Mess Yarnworks. You can find me on Instagram at Beautiful Mess Yarnworks and find me on Etsy, with, which is where my shop is, and on Ravelry as Beautiful Mess Yarn. And you may be wondering who this lovely lady is sitting next to me. And let me introduce you to my mom. Um, Hi. This is my mom, Leslie, and she is the reason for all of this knitting obsession um, that has now sort of taken over. So she's going to be my co-host today. So you'll get to see my finished objects, her finished objects, what I'm working on, what she's working on, and just some general knitting chatter. So, all right, so we're going to start before we get into what we're doing we're going to start with a little interview of sorts. Sure. Okay. So first, so why don't you tell us your knitting story? When did you start? How did you get started on um, this? When I was really small, I would uh, sit at the feet of my grandmother, if that sounds kind of cliche or something. Um, when I was around five years old and I would mimic her motions as she was knitting um, with pencils or crayons, whatever I could get my hands on, I would sit and help her. I would hold the yarn for her as she would wind it into balls because they didn't really have the modern day skeins the way they are, the pull skeins. So it was mm -hmm. all, um, did that. And then she got tired of watching me mimic her and decided to teach me how to knit when I was five. When you were five. When I was you five. You were knitting when you were five. I, I knit this little rectangular thing, lots of drop stitches and holes. So it was lace without intending it be. And um, my mother put it on the top of the toilet tank as decoration when I finished it. So very proud. it was an unintentional doily. Kind of. Yeah. Not Because quite. of all the drop stitches. <laughs> yes. But I don't know what you expect from a five-year-old. But yeah, it turned out that way. Do you remember so, what color? I think it was a blue. Okay. I, I want to say blue. Okay. So, and but... then did you knit consistently since then? Or are you like no. everybody else in the world where you sort of put it down for years? Well, yeah. Considering I was five, I put it down for quite a while. Okay. Um, picked it back up Yeah, when I was a teenager. I would do it on and off. And yeah, kind of consistent. Then learned how to crochet and... Um, Learned, taught myself how to read patterns and you know, just kind of did that consistently throughout the years. And you were sort of a jack of all trades because you knit, you did crochet, you did cross stitch. Right. You were a sewist. Sewist. That's the term. Because really? if you say sewer, it's yeah. spelled like sewer. That's <laughs> kind of gross. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you would make me those really awesome nightgowns. Right. With like the elastic neckband and armbands. Which was awesome because it started out as a Halloween costume. Yeah. Pattern. Yeah. And you made Halloween costumes yeah. from bridesmaids dresses. I did. Two, I think. Or just one. Just, just one, I Princess think. Princess Jasmine. You turned yeah. the bridesmaids dress into, into a... harem pants. Yes. So yes. without a pattern. No. No pattern. No pattern. So yeah. So you do a lot of crafty sort of fiber crafty I things do. I do. and then you t stopped i remember you made me a sweater vest like when i was in the ninth grade you're in high school yeah. and then i don't remember yeah. oh well you made the epic afghans crocheted yes, did a lot of the those. huge patchwork afghans for everybody that wanted one yes and you always did the baby sets but you weren't really yeah. knitting for you or garments. No, like not, you do not now. so much for me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. True. I mean, I've, I've done sweaters in the past. I did sweaters for you and matching sweaters for you and your brother. Yeah. When you were little. Do um, we have pictures of us in those? I don't think so. I should have brought it. I have one left, but it's uh, kind of crusty because it's really crappy acrylic yarn. Oh, uh, okay. I should have brought it with me. I didn't yeah. think of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So did that, but it seemed like the... Adult sweaters I've tried to make 
I didn't really follow the pattern too closely as far as like what yarn and stuff. I did make one for my sister. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember, you were little. Mm -hmm. um, I I've made a sweater vest for my mother. Mm -hmm. um, like a button down cardigan kind of sweater vest. Um, and the other sweaters I made just turned out way too large. Were you swatching? No, of course not. Did you even know what a swatch was? Um, no. Gauge swatch? No. No. No, I didn't. Used totally the wrong yarn. Yeah. You know, but that turned into an afghan. <laughs> <laughs> what? How did you turn a sweater yeah. into an afghan? <laughs> That's how big it was? No. <laughs> the sweater that I made that was way too big. Um, I is actually part of the afghan I made that was always on my bed, the patchwork one. The uh, the light, did you the cut beige. No, yeah, I unraveled it, and so since it was okay. four different colors, okay. So some of the squares you frogged it. That, yeah, I frogged it. See, I was picturing you picking up stitches in the shape of a sweater, and like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, how did that become an afghan? <laughs> yeah, okay. no, I frogged it and added three other colors to it and made it into okay. that, the big afghan that okay. covered my queen size bed. So what brought you back to knitting? Or I would say you're even more of an avid knitter now than ever before. We ever produced this much? I've never, no, I feel like I have to keep up with you now. Okay. Yeah. So you teaching you and then watching you and then you've like, you've, Far surpassed me at this point. So the student has surpassed the master. It is. You do call me sometimes with pattern I questions. I do. I do. Yeah. Quite honestly, though, you so you taught me Christmas Eve, two thousand fifteen. So it hasn't even been two years of me knitting consistently. Right. And it was the Atwood shawl, which is by Nicole from Huloco. Which... Oh yeah, you have an Atwood shawl. And that yes. one's cool, too, because she sort of did her own rendition with the striping. So the pattern right. isn't written that way. It's and, sort of written to be one color. And this is something you dyed. That was one of the All very the feels. first. Yeah, one of the very All first the feels. colors. And then this is uh, from Knit Pick. Yeah, Knit Pick. Yeah. Nice. So it was the Atwitch all. So it was basically knit, stitch, purl stitch, and yarn over. Yes. And then YouTube taught me the rest, quite literally. So anytime I yeah. needed anything in addition to that... Um, Different cast on methods or brioche. Uh, and I'm finding work. I'm using that now too. YouTube yeah. as a reference, which I never would have thought to do. But it's so when you easy. talked about doing it, so yeah. now if I'm home and I'm, they'll call for a certain kind of bind off, um, yeah. I'll go on YouTube yeah. and yeah. I know. And I'm going to talk about a new cast on and a new bind off that I learned. Over the past couple of days. Yeah. I actually had to do that for the States, Shaw. How oh, did you? For the stretchy bind off. Ah, so I'm on and YouTube we'll and saw it. And... We'll compare what we did for that. All right. Okay. So we're going to move on to finished objects. And I'm going to let my mom go first. I don't really have a complete finished object, but you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. So... Mom has finished up quite a few things recently. You've sort of been on a tear. Yeah, it's with been a finishing. Busy. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. what do you want to start with? Um, let's start with the mittens. Okay. I've I made I'm mittens. model one. I made mittens before for her when she was in school. I still have the hat, but I don't have the mittens. It was a set. These um, I picked up the yarn and the pattern at Knitter's Day Out. Mm-hmm. And uh, this yarn is from Prado de Lana. Which we Googled and found out means... means wool of the meadow? Yes. 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 Um, meadow wool. A meadow wool. Something. This is um, the acorn mitt and really easy to do um, by is... Little Woolens. Yeah. And I'll make sure I'll put all the pattern information down below. Okay. Too. Yeah, and I, and I love the fact when I got the yarn, the tag on it actually had the name of the sheep Aww. and the year it was sheared. Yes. Which was love I that. thought was so cool. So Prado de Lana is actually she's a shepherdess with her own flock. So and she has the wool from her sheep obviously sheared and then milled 
Um, yeah. And I love these two colors, and I love that it's called the acorn mitt. Look at how cute. Yeah. That so it kind of looks like an acorn. So you bought like a full skein, and then and like then a it was mini a skein. mini a mini skein. And do you yeah. have yarn left? Just a little bit. What are you gonna do with it? I don't know. You know what I this would be really it. good for? Just do like a little square, like a mug rug. Oh, just a garter border. Yeah, because it is. It's, it's you could even do the garter border in the brown and just stock in it. It would be true. perfect for that because it's it's pretty rustic. It is very rustic. I don't know if you can. As like, I was knitting every a, once sort in a of while, a halo. I would you know find a little piece of hay. Oh yeah, and I, I love that I was when you it out. <laughs> I love that when you have like freshly milled yarn from yeah. You know, like a, a it, local it flock was, and there's vegetable matter. It was great, though. So I'm looking forward to cold weather because these yeah. should be really warm. And this looks really long. Like, this looks like, well, do you have banana you know, hands? You know what I did? But when I, I read the pattern on, wrong. But when I put it on, oh, I see. I read the pattern wrong. You should have called me. Well, no, because it worked out <sighs> in the end. Um, so the way the pattern's written, it's written for like zero months to three months and all these different ones. And then each, there are certain sections of the pattern that don't apply to the size I was yes. doing. Yes. Yeah. So the first part, and I just kept knitting along. Was it like knitting, for large it was and for zero, zero to three month part. Oh. And so that's kind of in the bottom here. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, but that's okay. Cause it made it a little yeah. longer. I figured it'll yeah. fit under my coat. Yeah, so the sweater I'm knitting is sort of like that, too. It's like, okay, now for small and large only, knit another two right. inches or right. do this d decrease yes. or whatever. Okay. Yes. Well, so that's your first one. What else did you finish recently? Um, Socks. Oh, those are pretty so, cool sock blockers. I know. Thank you, Jamie. She brought these for me from uh, Rhinebeck. It's the very first pair of sock blockers you've ever owned. Well, yeah. I just usually so make them been, and wear them. Yeah, you block them on your feet. Not yeah. wet. You don't get them yeah. wet. No, that no, now. that would be gross. Um, so this is by Gail's Art. It was mm -hmm. a sock blank that I picked up at uh, Here, I'll hold one of them. Maryland Sheep and Wool. But I love how it's the same sock block and they look totally different. Sock block? Sock blank? Uh, sock blank. I know, they're like fraternal Sorry. twins. <laughs> I know, it's great. Yeah. It's great. Look so it's just a plain vanilla sock pattern. Yep. The heel flap yeah. and a yeah. gusset. I love I, I love, love the heel flap. I love the way that looks. Yeah. So I, I try to do that on my, all my socks. I try to convert. It's funny. I tried to convert you to the fish lips kiss heel. Yeah, I didn't like it. And you didn't it. like it. And I don't like it now either. I know some people swear by it, but honestly, and I, I have knit socks on right now. Sorry for shouting That's okay. my foot in your face. It's okay. But I think that doing the heel flap and the gusset is a better fitting sock. Yeah, I just... I think I, it fits better. Yeah. Should I use a $50 word? Aesthetically? I Aesthetic like it better. Way. Yes. I like that That better. is nice. So yeah. what do you think of blocking your socks now that you've blocked your socks? I, well, I haven't worn these yet, so... Yeah. We'll but see. it's like it was from a sock blank, so as you're knitting it, it's sort of crimped, but then wet blocking it, yeah, it, it and having it on the blocker sort of because when you're knitting them, if you haven't used a sock Even block before, you're like, well, that looks weird. Yeah, I would have to agree with that. Yeah, yeah but now they yeah. don't once they're blocked. Yeah, no, I like cool. it. I like it. Okay, yeah. so back to. Another finished object. What else do you have I here? Know, I and this was here. something that I. Did as well. Yes. Oh, I wish I you have it here. here. I don't. No. Um, so this is the States. Mm -hmm. We were we've saying been, it wrong for a long it, time. We've been saying it wrong for months. Yeah. Stathis. Yeah. yeah. So this is the oh. Stathis shawl um, oh, by... Never mind the dog barking. Irene Lawrence uh, from Flying Fibers. Irene uh, Lawrence. If Irina. you're a Googler. Sorry. Um... Flying Fibers in Landisville, oh. Pennsylvania. And this is their wool called uh, Yorkshire Medley. I don't... So it's not actually from their flock, though. No. They have it specially milled in England. For them. for Especially for them. For them, yes. And then... So Irina, 
is one of the co-owners of Flying Fibers yes. with her mother, Jerry. And then Jerry does all the dying. Yes. And this is Stormy, Stormy Sea. And I love how you can see there's variation in the color. So it's not completely... Mm -hmm. Solid and so mine was actually mine's actually this color of my shirt and it's it the is. color I yeah. my yarn tattoo is on yes. my back. Yes. yes. So this was uh I, I really, think yours turned out better than mine. I really like the pattern. It, it was really I feel easy. Like your to stitch follow. your stitch definition on that is really good. Like your gauge is good with that. I feel like I knit very loose. I do too. So. I do too. Yeah, I don't know why. I think maybe because we're throwers. I know that people who knit continental, who sort of oh. use or hold it in their left hand and pick the yarn, their gauge tends to be a little tighter. I, and if you hear yeah. the dog whining, she's right outside the door because my mom is her favorite person and she knows we're in here. <laughs> so if you hear little whines, that's what that is. Yeah. She's my favorite dog. Yeah. So, okay. So I don't have a completely finished object per se, but I did finish some a couple of big parts of my sunset highway sweater Ooh. so this is the sweater and i finished the body which is done and it, it's rolling up a little bit but that'll all work out in the blocking and i finished a sleeve <laughs> um now i kept kept seeing where you said you didn't like Doing no, the color nope. work on the not one bit. GPNs. Not one bit. Hated every second of it. <laughs> so it's hard. It's a little trickier. I mean, when this blocks, luckily it's not like super puckering. And when it blocks, it's going it, to, I mean, it looks fine. Mm -hmm. But it was definitely tricky. So um, just the colors in here again. So the darker gray is Hedgehog Fibers Salty Tails. And these are all single ply fingering weight. Then this purple is one of my just one of a kind. So this is Flash in the Pan number one. Um, this colorful one here, which is also this large section on the sleeve, is awesome. And it is called Cheap Thrills. And that is from Primrose Yarn Company, who is actually right down the road from us. Oh. Did you not? She's in New York. Oh, I didn't know that. In Dallas Town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we need, we need to take a road. Yeah. Well. I don't, I mean, she has a big studio, but I don't think she has a big uh, studio hours or okay. anything. Um, and then um, the lighter gray and the body is actually my color called Concrete Jungle, which is like one of my new favorites. It's got... And is that fingering? Some, it is. Yep. Purple and teal. So, um, so the body is done. The sleeve here where it ends, I was getting dangerously close to running out of yarn. And I only have a little cake left to do the gray on the other sleeve because I had two cakes of the gray. Uh oh. So I got a little nervous. Um, so this at the end of the color work on the sleeve was supposed to be two inches, but I only knit one inch. And then this ribbing on the end was supposed to be six inches, but I only knit four inches. But I'm not really worried about it because every sweater I've knit before this, the sleeves are too long. So. Maybe I might have like T-Rex arms or something, but so that's that. And so one of the new, I had said that I learned a new, um, cast on and bind off. I did the stretchy bind off, which is, I think I, I watched the tutorial on the sweet Georgia yarns website, but what it is, I bound off in pattern. You, you work two stitches, then you knit them through the back loop. Right. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's a, then work another shop. stitch and knit through the and back then, loop. Yeah. So you get this, I mean, it doesn't look odd even at, like this, but then it's actually nice and stretchy. So good for, I suppose, if you knit your socks toe up. Um, so the cuff is a little stretchier or sweaters um, or even the necks of sweaters, if you're concerned that, you know, those wouldn't be big enough. So that's sort of my cheating finished object my finished object is the sleeve so and I did it in about two days so I only have one sleeve left um but you'll see I kind of got distracted by um what I'm now working on I'm just going to sort of toss things aside to get them out of the way <laughs> so all right so what are you working on you have a couple oh, things I have a couple things um socks again oh that's a nice bag 
Yes. I she got that snagged, from. She snagged one of the I bobbing did. for apples kits. So I this did. bag is um, made by Shannon from Woodsy and Wild. And I love how she does the little, like, the coordinating tweed fabric on the bottom. Okay. So sorry. Enough about the bag. That's okay. That's okay. So um, this. And that's the yarn from yeah, the kit. Yeah, that's the yarn from the kit. I like how it turned out kind of striping. Mm -hmm. And that the, was the point. pattern is the Captain Steps, mm. I believe. It's a free pattern from Ravelry. I did um, a couple of changes. I like instead of the knit one, purl one on the um, cuff, I, I prefer the knit two, purl two. So I went with that. Why? I don't know why. Do you I think like it's the stretchier? way. It, I don't know that like it's it stretchier. I like the way it looks. Okay. Um, but um, I hate ribbing, and the knit one, purl one, I find very annoying. Yeah. So too much um, back and forth. Yeah. So I, I went with the two and two, mm -hmm. and then the heel instead of doing the um, eye of the partridge that the pattern calls for, I. I did this other here. I don't know if it has a name. It's just a slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one across, and then mm -hmm. just purl across. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, and then the gusset. So I finished that last night. And, and you pointed out to me, and I didn't even look at it this way. But it, if you hold it upside down, you can see that the pattern twists, goes across and sort of twists. Mm-hmm. On the front of the sock, because honestly, when you were texting me pictures of it, I was like, oh, you're doing Hermione's everyday every day sock. But it's not. But it's not. It is not. You can see that. And this is uh, like an eight row repeat pattern. Okay. Which is really easy. I mean, you don't have to try and keep count because I yeah. was, was going to do that with a little yarn trick that we learned from <laughs> Liz. Talk about that. And, okay, so she takes a piece of yarn, and I figured I'd go ahead and knot it so I have um, eight spaces to keep track of the row I was on. And each time you finish a row, then you yeah, put you your needle through, through the next, the next loop. space. Mm -hmm. um, so you can keep track that way of where you are. However, not paying real close attention, I knit it into the pattern. Knit it right into the sock. Yep. So I got a picture of that. I I had to wait till I got home to get scissors and cut it out and said, "Well, you don't have scissors where you work." I do, but <laughs> <laughs> I was on break and I wasn't going to go hunt down a pair of scissors. Okay. Um. So uh, I, I waited that. till I got home and uh, did that. So it's really easy to follow. It's just a whole knit two, purl two. Yeah. Uh, knit every other row and you just kind of shift one stitch to the right every mm. time you go. So the first row is knit two, purl two, knit a row, then it's knit one, purl two, and knit two, purl two. And you said that's free on Ravelry. It is the free on Ravelry. The captain steps. The captain steps. Yeah, and I started, I got the I second like one going this morning, so there is no second sock syndrome in my house. Nice. With my little... So obviously I did not inherit that from you. Or did I? Progress. Do you people. ever have second sock syndrome? No. Second sleeve syndrome? No. No, you're fairly consistent. Yeah, I'd like to get. I'm. Are you? You're, I don't like having too many things going but at look one time. You did. I know, but it gets Maybe annoying. Maybe you're becoming I get a little, less monogamous. And you're I get getting... a little stressed if I have more than one thing going at a time because I feel like I need to finish one thing before I start another. Yeah. So. But this I started because it travels. Yes. And it's always good to have something. To I did with. just finish a sweater for someone at, for Christmas. Okay. Which that would stay at home because that's not going to transport real well. Yeah. Too bulky. Yeah. So that I don't mind so much. Um, All right. So what's this other thing I also... the monogamous knitter has on the needles? <laughs> I started the um, three color. Sorry. Uh, three color cashmere oh, uh, shawl, although it is not love. cashmere. I'm not real happy how that first part ended up. It feels like a little lump there. Um, Was this a garter tab cast on? Yeah. 
a little so, block out. Yeah, so I started this. Um, so this will be like my at home project. And this is the three color cashmere shawl by mm -hmm. Hohi Locatelli. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the wool is from O Wool that I got at uh, Maryland Sheep and Wool because we walked in there and you looked at the box and said, Mom, those colors are you in a box. Yes, and you have to make a three-color cashmere yes. shawl. So yes. that's what we did. So we let's look the at yarn. the third color. So what's the third color? The third well, one's color in it, right? is <gasps> this, a lighter color. Oh, it's like, what's it called? Let's see. Yeah, this. This is oyster mushroom. Right. The darker color is... I don't want to ruin your cake. Hold well, on, that's okay. Um, the... What the heck here? Gorge. Gorge. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry. And uh, the other lighter color is... that is... Barn Owl? Yes. <gasps> that's is that the same thing you're using? I, yes. was, I was wondering that when I oh, saw it. Oh, cool soulmates. Okay, so, yeah. so this is the third color, and it actually... I think it's showing up. I don't think the light's really blowing it out too bad, but it's sort of like a really super light. I don't know. Now like the a rosy kind of. Now tendency. the more I look at it, it doesn't look pink or purple at all. Maybe. Sorry. Sorry. There you go. That's better to yeah, see. Yeah. Almost. So like a here's Barnell. This one is like a super, super, super light lilac. And yep. do you know that I love a wool? I, this next project I have is the first time I've ever used it, and I never made the connection that oh, well, it was called a oh, wool because it's, it's organic. organic. Yeah. No idea. No idea. Just not like, oh, wool. No. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Should have called But them. never, never made the connection. Do you want to share the bag that you brought all your oh, goodies in? Yes. So if you follow me on Instagram, I posted um, this maker, and I'm... I'm going to pronounce it two different ways just because I'm not sure how it's pronounced. I Tanae it. or Tanai Casey. And we met her at Knitter's Day Out. And yeah, look at that. It's great. It coordinates perfectly. And it has these one these super cute wooden handles. It's yes. huge. And it's really good quality, like upholstery fabric. Yes. So, I mean, this is tough. Sturdy. I don't, <laughs> it probably didn't, if any, require much interfacing. Tons of pockets. Oh yeah, lots of pockets. And it just when you're so when you're using it, you just flop these open and it yes. just sits like a bucket, like perfectly. Yep. And all your stuff is in it. Yes, it is. So that is the one that you chose, and that sort of has that cherry blossom. Yes, the cherry blossom pattern, pattern on it. On it. So here's mine, and I'll show you what I the reason why I haven't done the second sleeve on my sweater yet. Look at that red. I know. I love it. And it, it has a nice sheen. So here's the one that I have. And then my fabric on the inside is this coordinating plaid. So she has an Etsy shop. Um, I will put her Instagram username um, on the screen. So check it out. Run, don't walk. She has these bags. She has drawstring project bags, zippered project bags. She has these really cool waxed canvas tote bags. And then she also has the little, the, like a the coin purse. purse. Like yeah, it has like that closure, purse. but um, they're larger. So they would be really good for notions. Mm -hmm. And one really thoughtful thing on the pockets on the inside, she puts an extra stitch about halfway down one of the pockets. So that if you're keeping a pencil or a pen in there, it won't get lost. Yes. So it's perfect. Yes. Okay. But so here is the reason that I don't have my second sleeve done because <laughs> I've been working on this. Which so, is awesome. I know. Don't hold that side up. Sure. So this is my Ohm shawl, which is a pattern by Andrea Mowry. And I love the pattern. Yeah. It's, I know, right? It's great. And really, this section down here required a lot of counting. This, not so much. So it's perfect TV knitting. I love the texture. Mm -hmm. So, oh, and look. Look at my little apple cider oh. donut charm. And this was gifted to me um, by Joanna of uh, the Gnome Knitter. So... Now this is worsted? It's worsted weight. 
size 10 needles, which I made my mom drive over here and drop them <laughs> off yesterday because I was so anxious yes. to cast it on. So my colors, I'm using Barn Owl, like you have in yours. Yep. This is Coral Reef. This is Partridge Pea. And this is Cresheem Creek. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Mm. Um, so once this blue block is over, then there's some chevron color work in it. And then the middle section will be Barn Owl again. And it looks to be, you know, just simple stockinette with garter ridges. And then it'll have a repeat of this on the other side and um, buttons. So there's buttons like halfway down the long side and completely down one of the short sides. So you can wear it as a shawl, as a stole, mm -hmm. as a poncho with the buttons on the side. like a, a So it would hang triangularly. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and <good>. then <laughs> you can button it another way and have the buttons down the front. So it almost looks like a cardigan. Yes. I did see that on Ravelry when I was went on and looked at the pictures. I was after like, you she gotta check me. it out. Yeah. Funny story. I bought twice as much yarn as I needed. It's okay. Um it so pattern notes on Ravelry. She mentions what yarn she used. She also uses O wool worsted. And she said, Well, I have seven skeins of the main color, two skeins each of the contrast color. And I was like, done. I can do that. She had fifty gram skeins. I have 100 gram skeins. Ah. So if anybody has any ideas what I can do with about 1,300 yards of worsted <laughs> weight wool, uh, let me know. Make another shawl. Maybe I'll make up my own color work vest. There you go. How do you wear a vest? You don't. You don't? I don't know. No. I don't. I don't have any vests. You maybe make, not. You ooh, maybe not a. a maybe not a vest. But what if I did sort of like a boat necky, short sleeve thing that you could wear collared shirts under? What about another boxy sleeve? Ooh, the worsted boxy. How many yards know. does that take? I probably I don't, don't have know. enough for that. Oh, no, maybe not. No. I don't have no way. And the easy way out would be to say, "Oh, I'll just knit a sweater for my daughter," but she would destroy it, and then it wouldn't fit next month anyway yeah so true she grows like a weed but so this is what i've been working on um and i just started it yesterday afternoon i know it's crazy so, fast i know it's worsted weight it's size 10 you feel like you're getting a lot done but yeah. it's not i don't know i love it so that's what i'm working on i really like those colors so and that like i said is in my tanae casey bag so i will put her information there so that is currently what I'm working on. So the next segment is on the bobbin. And I do actually have wool on my bobbin. Um, but my spinning wheel is downstairs. And I am spinning this. The other... Oh, goodness. So the other braid is downstairs. And this I actually got from Gail's Art. And I love that it just says brown blue face wool. And it was $10 just for undyed blue face. Now this has been roughed up a little bit in its travels. So that's why it might look a little salty but um I, I promise you it's spinning though. yeah so um I've started the... yeah I could I could probably make a million pairs because I have eight ounces of this yeah, so, that's a lot of yarn yeah um so I started spinning something because so I've sort of become friends with um Tara who owns um Kite Tails Weaving or a local studio here for Sayori weaving. And um, on my trip to Rhinebeck and on the podcast and in my Instagram stories and stuff, I showed myself knitting <clears throat> in public at every brewery we stopped at um, and like every restaurant we ate at. Well, not every restaurant we ate at, but a lot of times. If it's during the day, I'll take it. Or if it's a brewery, because my husband's a home brewer and loves craft beer and he'll get a flight and I'll just sit there and knit. And she made the comment that she's joking to her husband all the time. That she's going to take her spinning wheel to Evergreen, which is a local craft brewery. And I was like, we should. So I think this coming Wednesday, we're taking our spinning wheels to a brewery. Fun. I think we're going to, I think it's going to be a good conversation starter. Um, yeah. So I wanted to have something started. So I wasn't like putting it on the leader string and, and having to get it going and stuff. So I wanted to have something started for that. And I'm taking it in my Stitches Plus Pearls bag 
which I won't say the full swear word, but it says F off I'm knitting. No, F off I'm spinning. I do have the F off I'm knitting bag too. Yeah, you do. Um, I can't really use them <laughs> openly anymore because my son's in the first grade and he can read. Yeah. And that F word is pretty phonetic. Gets to easy be a to problem. Fig- easy yeah. to figure out. So yes. so I'm going to be spinning at a brewery, which I thought was cool. Sorry, I had this skein up here and I just noticed it's completely untwisted and that's bothering me. So that's what I have on the bobbin. Um, the next thing I usually do is in the pots. And um, I mentioned on the last podcast that I'm completely switching up my bases, sort of the aesthetics of my brand as well. So those new bases are coming in. Um, I shared a picture of those on Instagram. I have yet to dye any because October for some reason is just a cluster. We had no free time at all. And it seems to be that way with a lot of people. They were like, oh yeah, for us too. Like it was a mess. Um, so that will be happening very soon. Um, but I do have some fun stuff in the shop that would be good gifts for knitters. Mm-hmm. Uh, or if you are going to do a Christmas Eve cast on with little bobbins. Um, we did that last year. We did. Will we do that again this year? Sure, why not? Probably. Okay. We'll figure yeah. something out. Yeah, what the yarns? I should figure out something to do with that extra oval. Well, I'm not going to make socks with worsted weight yarn. Oh, Oh, that's right. It has to be a sock. Christmas Eve socks. Yeah, because, oh, well, again, we both got that kit. And if you... Camping kit. Should we pass those on? Well, that was for mitts, but we could do socks. Yeah, but it's enough for socks. Yeah. But this up here is mostly sock weight yarn. So I do have a lot to choose from, or I can pick something I've dyed. Like this skadoosh color is really fun. So I don't know. So we'll do that again. But um, so I have a couple different sock uh, sets in the shop. This one is Willy Wonka, the fancy feet set. And this was the most popular colorway when I did that um, Willy Wonka themed line. And it has some brown, gold, and purple. And then there's a coordinating 20 gram mini skein that has that same gold for heels and toes. So that's one that's in there. And then the other one is the macaron set, which it just made me think of the pistachio macarons, like the strawberry ones. Uh Yeah. Like it really made me think of that. So that's this color and it has a little bit of that pistachio green in it. And then there is a coordinating mini skein for heels and toes there. Um, so those are in the shop. There's a few of those. There's, um, some of the colorways that I showed last time and then um, the new colors and stuff will be coming in shortly, maybe December. Um, Yeah. So that's what's in the shop. So we're talking about casting on things before Christmas and you mentioned you did a little Christmas knitting. I did. But you didn't bring it because it's a gift. I didn't bring it because it's a gift um, for my daughter-in-law. Okay. Um, I had made myself a sweater, and she really liked it, and she wanted one. What so. if she watches this? She knows she's she getting it. it away. She, no, she you just knows, don't want to show it. Right, because she doesn't know the color, um, and she doesn't, well, now she knows well, don't it's say finished. It. I'm not going to. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I didn't want to show that today, because if she watches the podcast, then she would see it and see i am surprised i'm such a selfish knitter that i could never in a million years imagine knitting someone else a sweater see that's why i end up not making stuff for myself because i make it for everybody else like i'll knit socks for my husband that's about it everything else for me (laughs) like if someone's like hey can you make me socks i'm like it's gonna be the most expensive pair of socks you've ever owned i know my response is usually i'll teach you to knit i'll teach you how to knit you can knit your own socks I don't know. I've Is made, that horrible? I've Does that made make me a horrible for person? Everybody. No, I don't think so. I mean, I understand your excuse with your kids. Yeah. Because they're growing so fast. Yeah. And that's a and I pretty do, expensive socks to grow yeah. out of in like, you know, six months. Yeah. And I do have to finish Riley's socks. But, I have like um, three quarters of the first sock done. Um, yeah. 
Uh-huh. And then my husband didn't know that socks with contrasting heels and toes was even a thing. And once he saw it, he was like, I need that. So <laughs> I need to cast on a pair for him. But I sort of, I only like to have like one pair of socks, one shawl, which I've totally broken that rule this week. And one sweater going at a time. Like those are sort of my three main How categories. I didn't finish the spring into summer shawl. The knitting oh. expat. Oh, yeah. No. But my, so my rationale was the Ohm shawl, because it's worsted weight, is a really good one for, like, super cold. And with winter coming, like, I'd rather have that one done. And then the spring into summer shawl is called spring into summer shawl because it's lighter weight with more lace work. And I was like, well, I can always you finish can have, it. I have finish time. Finish it and have it ready for next spring? Yes. yes. I have time for that one. So yes. that's how I justified it. But I'm going to show you what I'm getting ready to start working on for Christmas knitting. So I purchased from Lauren at Lolo Did It um, the Roxy the Hippo pattern. So cute. Look at how cute. And this was huge. Like everyone, when she was initially test knitting it, um, had it on their Instagram. People were, you know, had Roxy traveling with them and taking pictures. And I think Lauren may have too. So I got two sets from her website for those. And I've previously cast on the one for my son and then frogged it because I don't know. I did something wrong. And then I sort of moved on to the next thing. But the colors I got, so I did it. I got her worsted base for it. So the colors I got for my son, the first one is called Harley. And on, quite honestly, I picked it because it's BB-8 colors. Ah, and he yes loves it is. Star Wars. So that's the main color. And then the contrasting color is Blazing Sevens. Nice. Which I'm not sure what that's a reference to. I don't know. I think I think she's in Vegas. Oh, maybe. Slot maybe machines? Just, I don't know. I don't know. Lauren, if you see this and you want to let us know where that comes from. So these two are for my son. And then for my daughters, it's also worsted. I got Honey Dukes, the main color. She's going to love those colors. And then the contrasting color is Violet Beauregard. <laughs> so those will go together for her hippo. And it's nice because, so the kit comes with all the yarn you need. Nice. All the stuffing you need. Wow. Stitch markers. And then the safety eyes. Oh, so they won't cool. come out, which is good if you're going to make this and gift it for like a baby or a younger toddler. Yeah. And you get yeah. to pick your eye color. So I picked these little sapphire blue cute eyes for their hippos. So I got to get started on that. I'm thinking, I don't know, from people I've talked to who have made it, it works up pretty quickly. Because mm. it's worsted. Yeah. But yeah. I haven't made like a, I crocheted a weird like circle owl thing before but I haven't made like a stuffed animal or anything stuffed. I've crocheted kind of like a pillow pet type thing mm-hmm. for um a couple nieces and nephew. I've done that. Yeah. But, yeah. So that's Not what knit. I want to do and I crocheted a Christmas ornament years ago because I did that before I started knitting but I don't have any knit ornaments on my tree and I think I'm going to make an ornament. I feel oh. like Susan B. Anderson has a lot of Christmas ornament patterns. I never thought of knitting an ornament. Of crochet. I've, yeah. I have some crocheted ornaments. But... Yeah. So that, yeah. maybe I can use all my old wool for that. Maybe I won't need any other ornaments other than knit ornaments. There you go. If I did it that way. You have plenty of wool to do that. Yes. So, <laughs> I think that's, I think we covered everything. Yep. So, it was kind of cool to have a co-host. I didn't, I didn't feel like I was in this room talking to myself all the time so <laughs> is that how you normally feel I do uh, I do okay. and it's funny because so we're in the office and right in front of us on the other side of the camera is a window to I wouldn't say a main road it's not a main road and kind of the yeah. back entrance to the neighborhood yeah and we're so well lit in here that I imagine people driving by are like, what in the world? <laughs> what is, are they doing? Yeah, like if they catch a glimpse, they're like, what in the world is that lady doing? Yeah. So, cool. Well, that was a lot of fun. Thanks for... Yeah, thank you. Thanks for coming. That was good. Probably won't work out every time, but maybe every once in a while you can pop in and then we get twice the finished objects, twice the... Sure. Half objects. 
Yes. So very cool. All right. So don't forget to check out the show notes um, down below. And they'll also be in the Ravelry group, the All Knit If I Want To podcast group in Ravelry. And check out all the patterns and yarns that we shared today. And I'll see you again in about two weeks. So thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye. Bye.